You're looking at the Raiders' number one draft pick this year, Sebastian Janikowski. He will kick it away. The Indianapolis Colts have won the toss. That is the rookie Peyton Williams deep at the goal line to receive. The RCA Dome is jammed back to the rafters, and they are pumped for the arrival of the Oakland Raiders. Greg Gumbel, Todd Blackledge, and Armin Katayan, and we're underway. Booms this one into the end zone, and Williams will not run it back. And the Colts will start first and 10 from their own 20-yard line, and here comes Peyton Manning. 26 touchdown passes last season, one last week in the victory over the Kansas City Chiefs. He also had an interception early on, but the Colts were able to recover early from early turnovers and come back to beat the Chiefs. Todd Blackledge, good to have you alongside. Well, it's good to be here. Good to see Peyton Manning, too. Saw him a lot at Tennessee, and he has just elevated his game from week to week. Uh, he is a, a fun guy to watch play the quarterback position. First down from the 20-yard line. Marvin Harrison in motion. Manning fakes the pitch, looks down the middle, and throws behind Harrison. That is incomplete. Second and ten. Peyton has Dilger in motion, and now movement on the near side. That's Marvin Harrison, and that'll cost the Colts some yardage. Right of the snap, all start, 88 offense. Last Five week in yards, Kansas City, with the crowd noise, they used the silent count the whole game. Then now they don't have to use the silent count here at home, but as Peyton Manning was trying to check off on that play a little bit, over anxious there by Marvin Harrison. So it's second and 15. Look at Jim Mora. In his third year as head man of the Colts. Woodson up tight on Harrison. Here's Edwin James. Room to run. Back to the original line of scrimmage and a couple of more out to about the 22 yard line. Trying to keep the same defensive personnel on the field for the Raiders for this third down. From the shotgun, Manning on third and long. Throws near side, complete and out of bounds. Marvin Harrison close to a first down. He appears to have enough for the first down. Well, this is going to be a fun matchup to watch. The entire afternoon, Marvin Harrison, their go-to guy against Charles Woodson, one of the top corners in the NFL. A lot of cushion that time, respecting the speed and the quickness of Marvin Harrison. I would expect Charles will begin to tighten that up a little bit as this game goes along. Chuck Bresnahan, defensive coordinator for the Raiders, says Woodson will be matched up with Marvin Harrison most of the afternoon. James picks his way through across the 35 to about the 37-yard line. Marquez, Pope, Anthony Dorsett up from the secondary to make the tackle. And a penalty marker is down. Five-yard face mask foul, 33 defense. And forced from the end of the play, first down. That's Anthony Dorsett. What well, people don't realize about Edrin James is how powerful he is. At 216, 217 pounds. He's got a great stiff arm, great lower body strength, as well as upper body strength. He is a powerful guy who can also outrun you. Once again, the Colts go without a huddle. Manning barking signals at the line of scrimmage, which is the 42-yard line. Lance Johnstone jumped offside, courtesy of Peyton Manning. Unabated to the quarterback. 51 defense, 51 <laughs> defense. Unabated to the quarterback. Five yards, first down. Peyton Manning does so many things well, and one of the little things he does as we take a look at Chuck Bresnahan, defensive coordinator, he uses his snap count. He varies his cadence so well, and that's something you expect an older quarterback to really master. But Tom Moore says that, that Peyton Manning is as good as anybody at using the snap count, varying the snap count, and when you can get those freebies, those free five-yard penalties, it can really help you offensively. Tom Moore told us the other day the snap count is a weapon, it is. and it should be used. First and five. Three, 
Manning with time, throws, complete. Harrison at about the 43-yard line of the Oakland Raiders, and that'll be another first down. Again, we take a look at this matchup. Woodson with his eyes in at the quarterback. Now, at this point, he knows the ball's coming there, but he couldn't get out of his break. Again, a big cushion, and then kind of slow getting out of his break. And that's that's easy, playing catch, Peyton Manning and Marvin Harrison like that. Now he's up on top of him. Once right again, here. the Colts up to the line of scrimmage in a hurry. Edron James, left side, room to run. 40, 35, 30, down to about the 27-yard line of the Oakland Raiders, and another first down. 16-yard pickup for Edron James, the man the Raiders say they have to stop today. Well, Lance Johnstone is going to get up the field so quick, number 51, he runs right out of the play, and then there's a missed tackle. Again, you see the strength of Edron James breaking the arm tackle, but Lance Johnstone coming up the field after the quarterback left a big opening there for Edron James. First down from the 28. James again to the 20, to the 18-yard line. And that'll be close to another first down for the Indianapolis Colts, who have mixed their plays beautifully coming from their own 20-yard line. Doing a nice job. And again, they get their horse involved right away early in the ball game. You take a look at Edger and James again, 216 pounds, a guy who takes great pride in what he's doing, and he is really working at his game. That's the other thing about these three guys. They really work hard, tremendous right work. There, right there, right there. Pickup of nine, second and one. James, outside to the 15, out of bounds, at about the 14, maybe the 13-yard line, forced out by Charles Woodson. Six-yard pickup and another first down. One of the things that makes Edron James so special is he has the power to be a great short yardage in between the tackles runner, but he also has the speed to get outside and turn the corner on your defense. Picks up the first down that time. Again, very versatile. You take a look at what the Colts do in the red zone last year, 19th in the league. Edron James, five carries, 44 yards. Throws, end zone, Pollard, touchdown! Watch the pump fake by Peyton Manning. A slight little pump fake just to clear the middle of the field. Open up the middle for his athletic tight end, Marcus Pollard. And Peyton Manning continues to shine in the red zone. One of the best things he does, 31 touchdowns in his career in the red zone, only five interceptions. That's outstanding. What a workmanlike <laughs> drive by the Colts and Manning down the field. 80 yards and nine plays in the 13-yard touchdown pass to Pollard. Vanderjet for the extra point. And it's good. Well, the Colts have yet to give the Raiders a taste of the football except from this end of the field. Manning's touchdown pass has them on top. A look at Oakland coach John Gruden. You have to think he would have liked to have seen his defense come up with a stop or two on that drive. It just didn't happen. Danny Kite will kick it away for the Colts. You know, that Pollard reception was the ninth play of the drive. Seven of Indy's first eight plays. Either Marvin Harrison or Edgerin James touched the football. The ninth play went to Pollard for the touchdown. Napoleon Kaufman from his own three. The 20. And hit and knocked down at the 25. And here's a penalty marker thrown on the near side of the field. After a 23-yard return. It's going to be against the Raiders. Our referee is Bob McElwee. Holding number 37 of the receiving team during the return. 10-yard penalty, first down. Defensive back Johnny oh, no. Harris is guilty. And when we come back, Rich Gannon will take over the controls of the Oakland offense. 
as we welcome you back to Indianapolis. Rich Gannon and the Raiders first down their own 20 yard line. First time they've touched the ball this afternoon. We're five minutes into the first quarter and Wheatley's carry goes for very little before Bernard Holsey makes the tackle. No gain. We'll call it second and ten. And a look at veteran quarterback Rich Gannon in his 13th season out of Delaware. Signed with the Oakland Raiders back in February of 99 as a free agent. Former Kansas City Chief, just like Todd Blackman. <laughs> no better runner than I ever was. He's a dangerous runner as well as a thrower. On the ground again on second down, and this time Wheatley will get about three. Ryzen's in there right now. The first third down situation of the game. That's where Tim Brown says Andre has been the biggest contributor to this team so far. Take some of the weight off of Tim Brown. Gannon steps up, throws, incomplete. Off the hands of Randy Jordan coming out of the backfield. Would have been an easy first down that time for the Raiders had Jordan been able to hang on to that ball. The defense was flying out of there covering the deeper zones and they just tried to dump it underneath. Tried to run before he caught the football and came up short. Rookie Shane Leckler, the number five draft pick or fifth round draft choice, will kick to rookie Peyton Williams. Booming kick, Williams from his own 22. 30, 35. And down at about the 37-yard line. Peyton Manning coming back onto the field to go back to work. The Colts lead by seven. A look at Daryl Russell. If you were with us on the NFL today, you heard us tell the story about Russell being quoted about Peyton Manning as saying, you know, he can't just can't win the big game or hasn't won the big game. And although he was largely complimentary of Peyton Manning, none of that made the quotes. And Jim Mora made it a point to tell both Manning and the rest of the Colt team about Mr. Russell's comment. First down from the 37 yard line. And movement on the line. Looked like number 73 Five in the, the Meadows. All star 73 offense. Five yards, first down. So it'll be first and 15. Second time we've seen someone jump on the Colts offense. Again, Peyton Manning doing a lot of work at the line of scrimmage. and. That's one of the luxuries that Jim Mora has with him. Tom Moore's a good play caller, but Peyton Manning makes good decisions on the field and can call the offense at the line of scrimmage. But when you're doing that and you're taking extra time, you really got to hold your water up front as an offensive line. So Manning from the shotgun now. And he'll hand it off to James. James, 35, 40, out to the 42-yard line. Well, to continue that story about Russell and Peyton Manning, let's go down to Armin Kutayan. Armin. Thanks, Greg. You know, you mentioned Daryl Russell and the fact that Peyton couldn't win the big one. Well, I talked to Peyton before the game, and he just laughed. He goes, you know, that's that's high school stuff. That's what they do all the time. He said, I'll do my talking on the field. Back to you. No doubt. <laughs> Second and six. Dilbert, midfield, 45, out of bounds at about the 42-yard line. William Thomas ran him out after a 17-yard pickup in the first down. Well, before the game, Darrell Russell went out of his way to go over and say hello to Peyton Manning, and I'm pretty sure probably reinforced the fact just what Darrell Russell told us. The things that he said about Peyton were very complimentary. Forty-two yard line, first down, Indianapolis. Edward James. A couple of yards to the 40. And William Thomas in on the tackle again. Just a follow-up to that, Darrell Russell also complained a little bit that didn't think that their defense, the Raider defense, getting as much respect as they should. Well, today's a great test. If they can stand up against this offense and slow down Peyton Manning this offense. This defense will get a lot of respect around the NFL because this is a stiff challenge today here in Indianapolis. Total yards, what a disparity right now. Manning, complete 
inside the 25-yard line to Jerome Payton, and that'll be another first down. What is this no huddle doing to Chuck Bresnahan and his Oakland defense? Well, it's putting them on their heels a little bit because it's not necessarily a hurry-up offense, but it keeps the same personnel on the field. So Peyton Manning knows he's not working against a nickel or a dime defense. He's working against normal personnel. He's calling the plays at the line of scrimmage, and it just puts that defense back on their heels a little bit. Clock continues to move, six and a half to play here in the first quarter of the RCA Dome. Quick slant, Marvin Harrison inside the 15 to about the 12 yard line. Deepard and Woodson combined for the stop, but not until it's a 12 yard pickup and yet another first down. Chuck Bresnahan, the defensive coordinator, wanted to dictate tempo in this ball game. Right now, the tempo is completely being dictated by the Colts' offense. They are playing downhill against this Raider defense right now, mixing the run and pass. Chuck Bresnahan trying to find some way to get a play, something behind the line of scrimmage to get some momentum. From the 12, another quick drop, throws outside, Dilbert, 10. Five-yard line, clock continues to move. Eric Allen and William Thomas there for the stop, a six-yard pickup, it'll be second and four. Nice job by Eric Allen coming up on that play because had he not come up tough like that, Dilger would have taken it into the end zone. He had beaten the linebacker, but Allen came off his corner spot and made a nice tackle in the open field. Boy, on your right, Todd, when Chuck Bresnahan said he wanted his defense to dictate the tempo, this is not what he had in mind. Colts can get a touchdown, can get a first down without scoring a touchdown. James up the middle. Touchdown. Greg, the Raiders knew that play was coming. When Peyton Manning was audibly at the line of scrimmage, you could hear some of the linebackers yelling, draw, 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 but they still couldn't stop it. Good execution, great blocking in here by the center and guard, and then the strength again of Edger and James to get it in. Raiders' new draw was coming, guessing on the audible, still couldn't stop the play. You hear the term sealing off a, a, yeah. a, a, a line of uh, sight for Edger and James. That was exactly it. Vanderjack, his kick is good, and we are saying a piece of art in progress. Seventh play, 62 yards, and from umpire Cam, Edron James scores again. Boy, the difference in time of possession is going to be criminal. We are just under five minutes to play in the first quarter, and the Oakland Raiders have run three offensive plays. Meanwhile, look at the drive put together by the Colts. Danny Kite kicks it away. Napoleon Kaufman from the three. Raiders need something to boost their spirits. That won't do it. Napoleon Kaufman goes down at the 17-yard line after a 14-yard return. And John Gruden sends Rich Gannon back onto the field saying, get us started. John Gruden sees his Raiders starting inside the 20-yard line for the second straight drive. They started from their own 16 and now from their own 17-yard line. Wheatley and Ritchie in the backfield. Cannon going to throw wide open. Ricky Dudley, 25. Put football popped out. The Colts say they have it. Instead, the officials say the Raiders do. This definitely was a loose ball, and it was a matter of a tight end fighting a cornerback for the football. Watch the end of this play. Ricky Dudley, the ball is going to get stripped out of there by Tyrone Poole, and then it's a fight between Poole and Dudley, and Dudley clearly the stronger guy in that pile. Ball bounced right back down to him, and Dudley reached over and took it away. It's a first down for the Raiders. Gannon spins away from trouble, throws over the middle to Tim Brown to about the 33-yard line. Pick up a three on the play, second and seven. Jeremy Brigham is in as a tight end, number 87. 
on the ground, weakly, and not much there. Maybe to the 35-yard line. Dwight Collier, the middle linebacker, in on the tackle. Pick up a three, it'll be third and four. It was interesting, Colts defensive coordinator Vic Fangio said that when he went against Gruden when he was an assistant, he was a lot more aggressive, you know, threw the ball a lot more, took a lot more risk. Now that he's a head coach, he's much more conservative, more committed to the running game. And right now, to try to take this crowd out, that's what he's thinking right now. We've got to get some success running the football, kind of get some momentum back on our side. Being a head coach will do that, won't yeah. it? <laughs> Gannon over the middle, has his man Tim Brown, midfield 45 and out of bounds, close to the 40-yard line of the Indianapolis Colts. The Raiders in Indianapolis territory for the first time today. That's a 24-yard pickup. Is there a more familiar sight in the National Football League than Tim Brown going over the middle? Well, he's such a big target. He's a fearless guy going across the middle. You see the separation, and that's the key thing for receivers in the National Football League. When you make that move, can you separate from the defender? Give your quarterback some space. Tim Brown does it as well as anybody. And then you see the strength and the stiff arm to get a few extra yards. Tim Brown has now gone over the 11,000-yard mark for his career. Play fake. Gannon steps up, throws, incomplete over the middle. John Gruden and the Raiders facing a second and ten. Gannon three out of five for 40 yards now. As he has some breathing room from the 40-yard line. Wheatley cuts inside a block, 35-32 yard line. Collier makes the tackle again, a pickup of eight. It'll be third and two. It's good power football there that by the Raiders. Nice block. Inside by Ricky Dudley, Steve Wisniewski coming outside to lead the play. And that's good hard-nosed football setting up the third and short. That was a good play on second and long for the Raiders. I know you have some roots here in Indianapolis. It must be good for you to see the stadium full of cheering fans. Yeah, it is. I, my dad was a part of this coaching staff in 95 when they made it to the AFC Championship game. But this has become a real home field advantage now with the Dome. Gannon throws incomplete. And Tim Brown was out there, had a hand on it. Cornelius Bennett was right along with him. And onto the field, Sebastian Janikowski. Asked John Gruden the other day, how far has he been kicking them? He says, well, you know, he, we let him try a 58-yarder in the preseason and a 62-yarder. The 58-yarder was partially blocked. The 62-yarder was a bit short. But here indoors, a distinct advantage for him. This will be... About a 50-yard attempt. And should be well within his range. But it stays out to the left. Long enough, but missed it wide left. So Gruden and the Raiders fail in their attempt to get on the scoreboard. Indianapolis still with a 14-0 lead. Might be a time right now where you see Indianapolis take a shot deep. They've had their way offensively. I mean, everything is going right for them. Tom Moore likes to attack deep downfield at least five times a game. Things are set up. Good field position now to maybe take a shot. Woodson up tight on Marvin Harrison at the bottom of your screen. Play fake. Comes to the near side. Harrison comes back for the football and makes the catch. At about the 48, 49 yard line. Pick up of nine, it'll be second and one. I'll tell you what, they are not shying away from Charles Woodson at all. I mean, he's got a great reputation and deservedly so, but he is uh, playing a little tentative right now on Marvin Harrison. And Marvin Harrison, much more the aggressor in this matchup here in the first half. Again, no huddle, second and one. Woodson this time gives Harrison a cushion. James. Pulls his way for a first down across midfield. See, that run right there doesn't look like much, but when you consider that Edgerin James has the breakaway speed to turn the corner and outrun your defense, he has the ability to make you miss in the open field, but he also has that ability to be a short yardage guy who can get those tough one and two yards. He is a complete running back. Very few guys in the league can be a good outside runner and a good inside runner as well. I thought your analogy earlier was good about him being a larger Marshall Falk. First down, Colts, Manning calling the plays and the signals at the line. 
Pump fake. Throws to the far side. Kathan. And dives for the first down marker. Comes up a little bit short of it at about the 41 yard line. And clock continues to move, and that should do it for the first quarter of play here in Indianapolis. That is the end of the first quarter. It has been all Colts, 14 nothing. Indianapolis will come back to the RCA Dome after this message. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Along with Armin Katayan and Todd Blackledge filling in for Phil Sims. I'm Greg Gumbel. Welcome back to the RCA Dome as we start the second quarter. And the Colts with a 14-0 lead on the Oakland Raiders. Peyton Manning, 9 out of 10 throwing for 100 yards and a touchdown. He has hit his last nine passes. Second and one. And Manning fakes the quarterback sneak, comes up throwing, and it is incomplete and almost intercepted. And penalty markers are down. Well, that's probably going to be offensive pass interference because Eric Allen had a great shot at making that interception. That's exactly what it is. Penalty on Jerome Payton. That time, I think Payton tried to get a little too cute. I mean, he's really had his way with this Raider defense. That time, he looked like he Offensive faked like Offensive pass he, interference number 86. 10 yards, second down. Faked like he was going to run the quarterback sneak and then backed off the line of scrimmage. Thought he could get the home run, the big play, but neither corner bit. And, and very lucky it wasn't picked it off. It just wasn't there. Yeah. Peyton was telling us the interception he threw last week in Kansas City. He says it was one of those things where he saw it wasn't there. You know you shouldn't throw it. He threw it anyway. But when you hit nine in a row, you figure you can hit everything at that point. Great confidence right now. Second and 11 now. And he has his man, and that's tight end, Tim Gilger. And Gilger is down at about the 41-yard line of the Raiders. Pickup of nine, it'll be third and two. Jim Mora watching the no huddle working pretty much to perfection today with very few bumps in the road. John Gruden meanwhile says, doggone it, there are very few bumps in this road so far. <laughs> they tried to blitz that time, couldn't get to Peyton Manning, trying to find some way to, to disrupt his rhythm, but that time he was still able to get the throw off cleanly. Only the third time Manning has looked at a third down situation. Quick drop, quick pass, what a catch, reaching behind him by Jerome Payton, and that's enough for a first down. And now it's ruled incomplete. Tom Moore's a little upset about it. And I believe we're going to get a challenge. Bob McElwee walking to the near side. Let's take another look. It appeared like a good catch. Payton, quick hands, getting his hands back down. I don't think the ball ever hit the ground. At least from that angle, it doesn't appear that he did. Is challenging the ruling on the field. So we get our first challenge of the day. Let's take another look. You see as he reaches back, both hands on the football. Does he pull it off the turf? Does it hit the ground? Well, this will be fun. So Bob Mackle, we will take a look. The fans saw a replay here and of course, surprisingly, sided with the Colts. Yeah. <laughs> there is some question whether you have possession before the ball would touch the ground. If you have possession before and after, there is contact on the ground. But I don't even think that ball hit the ground. It didn't appear that it even hit the ground. Here's another look. Payton reaching back. And from that view, it doesn't look 
to me as if that ball scraped the ground. No, I think he got his left hand underneath the football and was between the ball and the ground. Well, John Gruden would sure like to put a stop to this latest uh, Indianapolis drive. Because, frankly, the Colts in their no-huddle approach to this game have given the Raiders fits so far today. And John Gruden knows the value of a guy like Peyton Manning, who is basically a coach on the field. If he can run the no-huddle, if he can change his snap count, if he can put the defense on their heels and make good decisions on running and passing, boy, it really is hard to play defense. It really is hard to get anything going. Bob McElwee still giving it a look. And as his time runs down, he's made his decision. Here's Bob. After reviewing the play, it is a catch. Indianapolis is not charged with a timeout. <laughs> Jim Morris saying, I told you. <laughs> well, that's a tough one to see. I mean, it's easy for us to see when we slow it down that much, but great effort by Jerome Payton. That was not a well-thrown ball by Peyton Manning. But Payton did a great job of stopping his momentum and reaching back for the football. So now that all is said and done, it's a 10-yard pickup. Another first down for the Colts, and Manning has hit 11 straight passes. And that strange sight you just saw was an Indianapolis huddle. <laughs> 181 total yards. Four wide receivers for Manning. Edger and James is flanked out wide as a wide receiver right now. He is at the bottom of the screen. Manning goes the other way. Complete and out of bounds to E.G. Green, the third-year man out of Florida State. Pick up a three. It'll be second and seven. We remind you, coming up on the NASDAQ.com halftime report, join Jim Nance, Mike Ditka, and Craig James for all the scores and highlights and a preview of the U.S. Open Men's Championship. That's all coming up on the NASDAQ.com halftime report. I want to reiterate with this no huddle, it's not a hurry up. They're still subbing some people. They're taking their time at the line of scrimmage, but it keeps the same defenders on the field for the Raiders. That, that tells Peyton Manning what defense to expect. Manning with a hand gesture to the far side, then gives to Edward James, trying to turn the corner. Dives across the 25 to about the 24, maybe 23 yard line. Reagan Upshaw and Charles Woodson with the stop after a four yard pickup, and it'll be third and three. This is really nice second effort by Edger and James at the end of this play. Watch, there's stopped for a very short gain at this point, but again, you see the strength running out of the tackle of Woodson and then just getting upfield for whatever he can get. He gets a couple more yards there just by going forward. Third and three. Manning needs to get close to the 20-yard line for a first down. Going to throw. He has his first down. That's with Marvin Harrison, and a marker is down in the backfield. That's Reagan Upshaw. And he's going to complain to the officials. It was Reagan Upshaw who delivered a shot. Personal foul, roughing the passer, 91 defense. There Hitting the quarterback below the knees late. Oh, man. Forced from the end of the play, half the distance, first down. There's the shot that Upshaw was guilty of. And a week ago against the San Diego Chargers, this is Reagan Upshaw delivering that shot to Ryan Leaf, for which he was fined $7,500. Last week it was to the head. This week it was to the back of the knees. But either way, the quarterbacks in this league are, are way too valuable. You can't get away with shots like that. 12 and a half minutes to play. Colts on the move again. First and goal just inside the 10-yard line. James. May have lost a yard on the play. William Thomas with the tackle, and let's go back to the hit on Manning. Reagan Upshaw, granted, the Raiders need something. They need some kind of play to turn the momentum, but this is not how you get it, going after Peyton Manning. And, and you can see Peyton Manning very upset, knowing that the chance of an injury in a situation like that, very high. And you know, for Peyton Manning, that's upset. Yeah. 
little love tap there at the end. That last play, the Raiders had it figured out. You heard Greg Beaker yelling, draw. Manning over the middle. James, five, touchdown. Looks like one of the plays we watched Peyton Manning and Edron James work on early this morning before the game. They put him in motion, got him singled up out there against Beekert, and that's a mismatch. Edron James is too good a receiver out of the backfield to cover with a middle linebacker. Leaves Chuck Bresnahan, the defensive coordinator of the Raiders, shaking his head. Chuck celebrated his 40th birthday on Friday. This is no celebration. Vanderjack with the extra point. 11-28 to play in the first half. Peyton Manning's second touchdown pass of the day. 21-0 Indy. You might say Mr. Manning is having himself an afternoon and we're not even halfway through the day. 14 out of 15 for 137 yards and two touchdowns. He has hit 14 consecutive passes. Kaufman and Branch are deep for the kick from Danny Kite. They will not run this out. Napoleon Kaufman will kill it there. And the Raiders will give it another shot from their own 20-yard line right after this. Back in the RCA Dome in Indianapolis, Todd, you have to wonder hey, what is it that Rich Gannon and John Gruden and the rest of the Raiders can do to get things going here? Well, they got to try to make some first downs. I mean, they've got to keep their defense off the field because right now they are overmatched by the Colts. So it's up to the offense and Rich Gannon to do something here. And Napoleon Kaufman is in the lineup and he gets the handoff and is stacked up just across the line of scrimmage. Let's go back to the touchdown, Todd. Well, a nice little wrinkle by Tom Moore and the Colts offense. First of all, they're going to take Edron James and put him in motion to loosen the defense. And then they take the tight end, Ken Gilger, and loosen the defense even more. Watch as James goes in motion. The linebackers loosen. Now Dilger is going to just clear the field and an easy throw right across the middle from Manning to James for the touchdown. Nice little wrinkle into this already potent cold offense. Second and nine for the Raiders. That's Wheatley in motion. Gannon throws, throws behind his intended receiver, Andre Risen. Andre Risen, the newest addition to this Raider team, caught the winning touchdown pass last week against the San Diego Chargers. And the Raiders tell us from the moment he set foot in a Raider uniform, he's had his nose in the playbook. Well, he's had to learn a lot of different offenses, seven different teams he's played for in the NFL. He's caught touchdowns for seven different teams. The only guy in the history of the NFL to do that. So uh, he is productive wherever he's been. He's been a productive wide receiver when he gets in between the lines. Rising with Kansas City, Jacksonville, Green Bay, Cleveland, Atlanta, and yes, Indianapolis. Third and nine. Gannon brought down at the 22-yard line. First sack of the day, number 96, Josh Williams. The rookie out of Michigan. You know Rich Gannon can run the football. That time, he hesitated a little bit. Rather than running right away, which he normally would do, at this point, if he runs right now, he probably makes the first down. He was still looking down the field, trying to find a receiver, trying to make a bigger play. And by that time, the pursuit caught up to him. Good coverage by the Colts downfield. Rookie Shane Leckler booms one out of there. Peyton Williams, the rookie, from the 23. 30. And is corralled right there by number 55, Bobby Brooks. 55-yard punt, seven-yard return. And Peyton Manning ready to come back. We've had a penalty marker thrown on the field just as we were about to take a commercial break. A little tussle going on around midfield. And the officials are talking about it. I think we may have two penalties. There was actually a flag on the opposite side of the field as well over by the Raider bench. Oh, yeah, they're matching. <laughs> one is at the 46, one at about the 46 and a half yard line. 
One of them was number 84, Jerry Holding Porter. Number 27 on the receiving team. Personal foul, 84 on the kicking team. By rule, the receivers keep the ball at the spot of their foul. First down, timeout. The penalties are on David Macklin of the Colts, Jerry Porter of the Raiders. And now we'll take our break and come right back. We told you earlier, head coach Jim Mora of the Colts made it a point to tell his team and Peyton Manning about the comments of Daryl Russell. We don't know if that's the reason for this, but it certainly didn't hurt, did it? No, it certainly didn't hurt. It, I think the combination of the no huddle and Peyton Manning calling the plays at the line of scrimmage and the use of his snap count has been way too much for the Raiders. Yeah, so James back. following blocking on the right side across the 35 to about the 36-yard line. Make it a seven-yard pickup, and it'll be second and three. Busy day for Edron James. We talked about the Raiders identified him as the key to this offense. They had to try to neutralize him. They have not had much success against him so far in the first half. Colts with 15 first downs today. Oakland with 15 first downs this season. That one too low for Harrison to deal with, and it'll be third down and three. Well, Jim Moore looks like he's having a bad day. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure this has been a a lot easier for him to watch here this first half than last week in Kansas City. They didn't start off nearly as sharp in the first half last week against the Chiefs. Played much better in the second half. Manning's consecutive completion streak ends at 14 with that incomplete pass. He needs the 39-yard line for a first down. Throw complete, wide open, Dilger. 45, 40, 35, and down to the 31-yard line of the Raiders. The man Peyton Manning says is the most unselfish player I have ever seen. 33 yards and a first down. And a great read by Peyton Manning. It was a zone blitz. There was pressure coming from the outside, but they were playing zone behind it. He knew he didn't have to throw the ball quickly. He allowed Dilger to get down the field and get open for the catch. Good read of the zone blitz by Peyton Manning. First down from the 32. Go, 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 go. Play clock down to three. They get the snap off. Pump fake that way. Comes this way. Incomplete. Intended for Marcus Pollard. Anthony Dorsett is with Pollard stride for stride. Boy, Manning sure gives you a lot of looks, does he not? He does. I mean, and he attacks. I mean, he puts pressure on the defense. I mean, he is in constant attack mode calling these plays at the line of scrimmage. He wants a huddle now. 169 yards and two touchdowns on the day for Peyton Manning. And we still have eight and a half minutes to play here in the first half. Shovel pass, Edwin James across the 30 to the 29-yard line. Tony Bryant, number 94, corralled him after a three-yard gain. It'll be third and seven. Well, let's see, what is it we haven't used today? The <laughs> shovel pass. Well, they always are trying to find creative ways to get the ball in the hands of their playmakers, Marvin Harrison and Edron James. That time, Tony Bryant stayed at home, made a nice play for the Raiders, a much-needed nice play for the Raider defense. Look at the difference in total yards here in the first half. Third and seven. And a hit as he let go of the ball, and it's incomplete. Edron James was the intended receiver down around the five-yard line. Great pressure on the inside that time. Pushed the, the pocket right back into Peyton Manning's lap. It was Josh Tabs. Watch here in the middle, number 99. Watch this push. Just takes his man, has leverage, drives him right back into the legs of Peyton Manning and forces the bad throw. 
Mike Vanderjat on the field. He has made 31 consecutive field goals. That includes playoffs last season. This will be a 47-yard attempt. And there goes that streak. 31 consecutive field goals. That snaps that string. And our score stays at 21-0. Welcome back to Indianapolis, everyone. 7.36 to play in the first half, and the Raiders desperately trying to get something going. Napoleon Kaufman in the backfield. Gannon running out of the pocket. Slides down across the 40 at about the 42, 43-yard line. Todd, you just mentioned during the timeout that this is a big possession for the Raiders. Yeah, it really is. I mean, they finally got something positive, a missed field goal. Now they've got good field position, and they need to put a touchdown in here before halftime. They need to get something good to happen offensively. And they've got the field position, and they've got a veteran quarterback in Rich Gannon. This is very important for their offense right now. Second and five. Gannon has time. Throw Tim Brown over the middle. 40, 35 to the 32-yard line. Dwight Hollier pulls him down, and once again, Tim Brown over the middle. That's a 26-yard pickup. Great pass protection up front by this offensive line of the Raiders. Gannon, nice sight lines down the field. Good, clean pocket. That's a, a long developing play, the deep crossing route to a wide receiver, but he had plenty of time to wait for Tim Brown to get into that opening. 32-yard line of the Colts, and Kaufman back into the game, alone back behind Gannon. Gannon fakes the pitch, throwback. Throws complete, Dudley with room to run. Penalty marker is down as he falls across the 20 to the 19-yard line. That's a 13-yard pickup, and now let's check the flag. It's almost certainly coming back the way where the flag was thrown. As long as it took for that play to develop, you got to figure someone's downfield. Eligible man downfield on a pass, number 63. That's, That's the a five-yard penalty. First down. Center Barrett Robbins. All screens are set up with timing, and there's a certain timing that the linemen get accustomed to of when the ball should be thrown, when you can release downfield to make the play. Rich Gannon didn't have a clean lane. He had to pull the ball down and throw it late, and by that time, Robbins was down the field. Here's the key. Barrett Robbins is deeper than Ricky <laughs> Dudley was. John Gruden told us yesterday, four first down penalties a week ago in San Diego almost sank the Raiders ship. Napoleon Kaufman room to run. 25, 20 to about the 17-yard line and a first down. 20-yard pickup, Chad Bratsky made the saving tackle. Huge play for the Raiders offense. They got the penalty, like you mentioned, on first down. Their Colts are going to come with a blitz from the outside, and there's going to be a nice hole open up here. Nice job blocking on the inside that time. Mo Collins, the right guard, a nice block to spring Napoleon Kaufman, and they got all that yardage back on one play. Napoleon Kaufman, the first-round draft pick of the Raiders back in 95. Now in his sixth season out of Washington. And the Raiders knocking on the door in the red zone for the first time today. Throws it out, and that is met. Jeremy Brigham made the catch, and then Dwight Hollier was there for the hit for just a one-yard gain. Meanwhile, Cornelius Bennett was in on Gannon. Cornelius Bennett has hit a lot of quarterbacks in the National Football League. He still can get there quickly as you take a look at the end of the play. Gannon checking out his wrist a little bit. Had to throw that one underneath Cornelius Bennett as well. Second and nine. Gannon eludes the blitz, rolls, keeps it. Ten, five, diving to about the three-yard line. It'll be first and goal for the Raiders. Greg, what a great job by Napoleon Kaufman picking up the blitz. Mike Peterson is going to come on the blitz right here. Now watch Napoleon Kaufman get in there and give up the body. 
got drilled by Peterson, but that was all that Rich Gannon needed was a little bit of room to get outside and use his legs. Boy, Napoleon Kaufman listed at 5'9", 180. Mike Peterson, 6'2", 235. Wheatley and Richie in the backfield. First and goal for the Raiders. Wheatley. Nowhere to go. Bernard Whittington, number 95, stopped up the running lane. It'll be second and goal. I think if you're John Gruden right now, you're thinking two things. we got to get a touchdown. And number two, if we can eat up more of this clock, that's good too. This offense has been too hot against us in the first half. We'll go in 21-7, try to regroup, make some changes at halftime. Don't let them get the ball again and try to score. Raider offense has come to life on this possession. From the three. The pass incomplete off the hands of Tim Brown, who had a touchdown if he could have held on. That was a rifle shot oh, from the air. That kid, that ball was really thrown hard. I'm sitting here thinking the same thing. Tim Brown, you know, one of the most sure-handed guys in the league, but watch as he gets his head around, that ball is on him. I mean, there is no chance, and it was high. It was not a, an easy ball to catch. This ball has to be down in front of Tim Brown so he doesn't have to reach up to make the catch. Tough catch for Tim Brown. Third and goal. Gannon looking, looking, going to run it to the end zone. Touchdown. Rich Gannon's legs as much a part of that drive as anything as the Raiders finally get on the board with 2.51 to play in the first half. Good decision by Rich Gannon. He was looking for his tight end Dudley in the back of the end zone. It wasn't there, and he makes the good decision, and you know he can run the football. He's done it his whole career, past 1,500 yards as a rusher last week in their win against San Diego. Gets him in the end zone there. Leckler holds for Janikowski's extra point attempt. And it is good. The two rookies combined to put the extra point up. 2.51 to play. 21-7, Indy. Janikowski getting set to kick it away for the Raiders. And that last drive, Rich Gannon, 21 yards rushing, 27 yards passing. You know, last week when they beat San Diego, he didn't feel like he played very well. It was a very frustrating day. But in the last quarter, when it really mattered, he played well. A game-winning drive. 53 yards, eight plays. He made some key runs and throws in that game to win the game. And as you mentioned, certainly a, a key, important drive for the Raiders to stay in this ball game. They needed that touchdown. Peyton Williams had his goal line. Line drive kick. Williams will field it and keep it in the end zone. And Peyton Manning will come back and go to work and once again. We'll send out our greetings to my partner, Phil Sims, who is watching from a hospital bed here in Indianapolis. Just a little less than 24 hours ago, Phil was separated from his appendix, much to his chagrin. Have to get He'll come out of it okay. I told him to be tough. He's always been one of those tough quarterbacks. Have to get him to send me a little report card after this one. <laughs> I'm sure he's taking some notes. First and 10 from the 20-yard line for Manning and the Colts. Once again, Woods is very tight on Marvin Harrison at the top of your screen. Quick pass, Pollard. And Pollard can't get away from the tackle of Anthony Dorsett, a pickup of about four on the play. It'll be second and six. And again, the Colts will go without a huddle. Pass, Harrison reverses his field, slides down at the 34-yard line. That'll be first down. You know, Manning already had the total package. A week ago, he goes without the snap count. This week, no huddle. Two minutes to play here at the RCA Dome in the first half. 21-7, Colts, and we'll be right back. 
Two minutes to play in the first half. The Colts first down from their own 34, and Manning goes with four wide receivers. Catherine okay, James picking his way through the line up to the 38 or 39 yard line. They pick up a five on the play. It's second and five. Greg Beekert, Lance Johnstone in on the tackle. Great situation for Peyton Manning here, running the two-minute offense. He's got all three of his timeouts left as well, so he can afford to use his full arsenal, running, passing, thrown in the middle of the field. Big blitz by the Raiders. Manning complete to Dilger and out of bounds for a first down. You know, the amazing thing to me that John Gruden, I'm sure, is, is really scratching his head about is they haven't even been able to knock Peyton Manning down in this first half. Reagan Upshaw got one hit on him. It was clearly a late hit, a penalty. No other time Peyton Manning has been standing up the entire first half. And they have not gotten any pass pressure on him. And when they have brought pressure like that play, he's been able to beat it with his arm. First down at the 45. Quick pass, James. And a nice tackle made by Beaker, the middle linebacker, to prevent a big gain. Gain of a yard on the play to make it second and nine. Take it. This time Manning from the shotgun. This time gets rid of it just before he goes down and it's incomplete. Daryl Russell, number 96, was in on Manning. Daryl's been pretty quiet in this first half. One of his trademarks is the quick penetration, his get off the line of scrimmage. And this is kind of vintage Darrell Russell. Penetration, pushing his man back into the backfield, and then wrapping up the quarterback. Doesn't get the sack, but forces the bad throw. He overpowered Larry Moore, the right guard. Darrell was telling us yesterday, he'd love to see a little one-on-one -on -one every once in a while. He really gets a little tired of being double teamed. Third and nine over the middle, Edwin James, first down yardage to the 42-yard line of the Raiders, and a timeout is called to stop the clock. 12-yard pickup, first down, Indianapolis, and stops the clock with 57 seconds to play here in the first half. Again, a little pressure the play before, this time the quick throw to Edwin James, a little back inside route. And again, those linebackers, that, that's tough duty, trying to cover Edger and James coming out of the backfield. He's strong, he's quick, he's explosive. And you're asking Greg Beekert and William Thomas to, to cover that guy coming out of there, very difficult to do. Tom Moore, offensive coordinator. Gotta like what he's seen so far. What he's seen is 205 yards throwing from Peyton Manning today. I asked him about Peyton. You know, is there anything that hasn't been talked about that, that really stands out Come to you about D. Peyton? And he said the one thing about it better than any quarterback has ever been around, he's got great recall. He can remember a scenario or a play from a game last year and the adjustment. If it happens today, he just instantaneously has a knack to, to make the adjustment. Has great recall of situations he sees on the field. Here comes the blitz. Manny trying to spin away, gets it to Dilger. And Dilger is brought down at about the 43-yard line. William Thomas had a hand on Manning, hit him by the jersey. Peyton Manning has only been sacked once in six quarters so far this young season. Another blitz. Over the middle. Harrison, 35, 30, and out of bounds. Greg, what's so easy to overlook on this play is how quick Marvin Harrison's hands are to make this catch. This is the bad throw, down by his shoelaces, but almost not even breaking stride, able to reach the hands down, snag the ball, and then get to the sideline. And he, he did it so effortlessly and so fluidly that it, it didn't even look like a hard catch, but that was a hard catch. Six of his seven receptions for first down here this afternoon. 28 seconds remaining, Colts with two timeouts. Quick pass, James, 25, 23, maybe to the 22-yard line. And another timeout to stop the clock with 20 seconds to play. 
A pickup of eight. It'll be second and two. We remind you to get live updates for each NFL game as it happens. Just click on live scores at cbs.sportsline.com. John Gruden, boy, is he intense. <laughs> I told you he wanted to take a little more time scoring that touchdown on the other end. Look at that. Look, look, who, does, who does he remind you of? That's who he reminds you <laughs> of. <laughs> he may walk in the locker room uh, door like that here yeah, at he halftime. <laughs> You know, he and Chuck Bresnahan will be wondering just what they can do in the second half with the clamps on this Indianapolis offense. Raiders were less than explosive a week ago in a low scoring victory over San Diego. Second and two. Colts have one timeout remaining. Looks right, comes back left, has his man, Payton, Payton across the 10 to the 8-yard line, and Manning calls his third and final timeout. Huge cushion this time by Eric Allen working against Payton. And again, Payton Manning pump fake, trying to get it to the end zone. It wasn't there, took the outlet receiver, but what a huge cushion that time by Eric Allen down by his own goal line. Eric Allen, six-time Pro Bowler. Watch Eric Allen now. He's watching the quarterback, and he's going to turn and run deep. He thinks Peyton Manning's throwing the ball deep and just kind of lets go of Peyton, and that's an easy completion for Peyton Manning. Remember, too, as he was looking back in the early part of that play, Manning was looking to the far yeah. side of the field. He's pump faking, looking down the field, and Eric Allen got a little complacent there. Look at those numbers for Manning. 25 of 30, and a week ago he was 22 of 32 the entire day against Kansas City. He's used five different receivers on this drive. No timeouts remaining for Indianapolis. 11 seconds to play in the half. Got to throw it to the end zone. If they get tackled short, they won't be able to get the field goal team on the field. Penalty marker is down. Quick pass. It is at the goal line, incomplete. And this is going to be against Indianapolis. Bob, that microphone isn't working. Illegal shift, two men moving, and they did not reset prior to the snap. Five-yard penalty, first down. So Mike Vanderjat will come on to the field now to attempt a field goal. His string of 31 straight went by the boards a little while ago. He's going to blame you, you know, yeah. putting the X on. Him. He missed from 47. This one will be a 32-yard attempt. That will make it 31, just inside the 32-yard line. Hunter Smith holds. The kick is up. That's good news for Mike Vanderjack. He's a, a new streak has started. <laughs> Three seconds to play here in the first half. And Indianapolis extends its lead to 24 to 7. The Colts have put together scoring drives of 60 plus yards four times today. Three seconds standing between us and halftime. We'll be sending you back to New York for a complete update. How about these? three weapons of the Indianapolis Colts. Manning has done his share. Edron James has done his share. And Marvin Harrison, you know, it's amazing when you know exactly what the other team is going to do and yeah. you can't stop it. Yeah, the Raiders out there trying to call the audibles, knowing what some of the plays are, can't stop it. And to their credit, the other thing Indianapolis doing a great job of in this first half, protecting the football. No interceptions by Peyton Manning. Had the near interception on a play that was called back. But... No fumbles by Edger and James, no interceptions by Peyton Manning, and a very efficient offensive first half. Danny Kite set to kick it. Napoleon Kaufman is deep, and this one squibbed on the ground, bouncing Kaufman from the 13. 
the 20. 25 and out of bounds and that'll do it for the first half. There is no doubt as to who had the advantage the first half of play in this game. The Indianapolis Colts came out. The no huddle had things their own way. Let's go down Armin today. Armin. Thanks, Greg. Coach, your thoughts on the decision to go no huddle, at which Peyton has played virtually to perfection? Well, we worked a lot on no huddle in the preseason. We used it against, uh, I think, the Saints in our third game the whole first half. We're pretty good at it. Peyton likes to do it, so we just, you know, it gives defenses problems. You got some momentum back, too, with that field goal away from the Raiders. That helped a little bit, too. We just got to do a better job on uh, Gannon. You know, when we get him back there, we got to get him down. All right, Coach. Thank you. Greg? All right, Armin, it's the end of the first half. The Colts in the lead, 24-7. to Jim Nance will be along with the NASDAQ.com halftime report after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Welcome back to Indianapolis. The Colts with a 24-7 lead on the Oakland Raiders at halftime just a moment ago. Armin Katayan caught John Gruden coming out of the locker room. Coach, what do you do to slow down that no huddle offense and Peyton Manning? Well, we got to execute, number one. Number two, you got to tip your hat to him. He's made some plays. He's recognized a lot of the looks that we presented him with. We got to keep playing. We got to get something going on offense, play the final 30 minutes. All right, Coach. Greg, back to you. All right, Armin, thank you. Uh, Todd Blackledge, uh, I don't think that John Gruden's going to spend the <laughs> second half tipping his hat to uh, Peyton Manning. No, he's got to get after him a little bit. I mean, no sacks, no forced turnovers. They've done nothing to disrupt his rhythm in that first half. I think it's on the front four of the Raider defense. They've got to play better. They've got to take control of the line of scrimmage and pressure Peyton Manning a little bit, disrupt his timing. And then offensively, they got to run the football and, and keep that offense on the sideline. During those last few minutes of the first half, they began to show some semblance of an effective blitz. Yeah. Yeah, they've got, you know, you can't give them a steady diet of any one thing. You've got to mix it up, and I do think it's the front four that's got to play the, play the game. Napoleon Kaufman from his own three-yard line. And out to about the 23-yard line, Dwight Collier with the tackle. After a 20-yard return, look at the halftime numbers. Some big numbers there, Todd. And look at that, 21 first downs, 315 yards in the first half for the Colt offense. No turnovers. Five of six on third downs. I mean, that is as efficient as you could possibly be. Time of possession difference is only eight minutes. That means the Raiders battled back to own the football in the second quarter a little bit. That was a huge drive that Rich Ganton led him on for a touchdown. And again, another very important possession right here to set the tone for the last 30 minutes. Wheatley and Ritchie start out in the backfield. And that's Tim Brown in motion. And Gannon going to throw on first down. Has time, throws, Tim Brown wide open. Across the 35 to the 38-yard line, Jason Belzer tip, tripped him up after a 15-yard gain. This is excellent protection again up front by that offensive line. Again, a, a motion by Tim Brown. He gets nudged at the line of scrimmage and then just finds a little soft spot in between the defenders against the zone defense of the Colts. A guy like Tim Brown, so reliable, you know where he's going to get to. You know he's going to find those spaces in the, in the soft part of the defense. Gannon to throw again. This time he's going deep. James Jett can't catch up with it. It's incomplete. It'll be second and ten. James Jett. Jet, an undrafted free agent back in 1993, was the NFL's fastest man in 96. Played football and ran track at West Virginia. An appropriately named, yeah. I might add. <laughs> a difficult guy to overthrow, too. Rich Gannon <laughs> did at that time. Olympic gold medalist in 1992 in Barcelona, a member of the American 400 meter relay team. Gannon on second and 10. Short drop, quick pass, complete over the middle across midfield. Andre Risen with the reception in the 13-yard game. That's a first down for Oakland. Well, unusual formation that time for the Raiders. Ricky Dudley was actually lined up in the backfield as a fullback, protecting the backside of the quarterback, Rich Gannon. And good protection. He was able to find Risen for the good completion. Risen's first catch of the day. Kaufman, the lone back behind Gannon. The ball just across midfield into Colt territory. Kaufman, 45, 40, 
35, cutting in and out of blockers and tacklers and out of bounds just shy of the 20 yard line. 28 yard pickup, Jason Belzer knocked him out of bounds. Napoleon Kaufman saying, hey Edrin, I know this is your house, but I can do a few things too. What a great run. Watch the explosion after he plants and takes it to the sideline. He gets the corner on the defense, and you see the speed of Napoleon Kaufman. That's an outstanding run. Good vision down the field, finding the holes. Kaufman contributed nothing on the ground in just four attempts a week ago against San Diego. Kaufman has 49 yards today. Wheatley back in the lineup, takes the handoff and goes nowhere. Dwight Hollier, number 56, along with Ellis Johnson, make the stop. No gain. It'll be second and ten. His defensive coordinator, Vic Fangio. Got a nice play from Ellis Johnson there to stem the tide a little bit. Good penetration from his defensive tackle position to slow that play down. Tim Brown all the way to the top of your screen. Again. Quick pass. Wheatley out of the backfield to the 10, falling forward just inside the 10 yard line. Josh Williams made the tackle. It's an 11 yard gain and it'll be first and goal. Nicely executed play. This is Wheatley. Watch him just kind of show pass and then he's going to just slip out. Well, then he's being defended by a defensive tackle. There's no way he can keep up with a running back. Very well executed. Josh Williams has to make the tackle, but Wheatley did a nice job of selling that, taking his time, showing block, and then slipping out into the flat. And a nice play by the rookie, Josh Williams, too. First and goal, Wheatley. Bances to the eight, maybe the seven and a half yard line. Pick up a three on the play, at least second and goal. Another impressive drive for the Raiders. They had the one there in the second quarter, and again, a critical offensive possession for the Raiders, and Rich Gannon and this offense have responded. Important for a team that's been knocked around early yeah. in the game to maintain its composure. The Raiders have done that. From the seven. Gannon pulls it down to the five, going for the corner. Touchdown! Rich Gannon puts the wheels to work and does it again. We heard Jim Morris say at halftime they've got to find a way to tackle him when they get him back there when the receivers are covered, but they weren't able to figure it out here. Again, Rich Gannon showing what the old wing T Delaware quarterback can do. Finds that front pylon. And Jack Nicholson, I mean, John Gruden, <laughs> <laughs> says, yeah, Janikowski for the extra point. And it's good. 10.56 to play in the third quarter. And Rich Gannon, for the first time, has had two rushing touchdowns in an NFL game. A look at Rich Gannon, a clear turnaround the last two times the Raiders have had the football. Janikowski kicks it away. Peyton Williams in the end zone, picks it up, 5, 10, and that could be a boost defensively for the Raiders. Only a 14-yard return, and Manning will start deep in his own territory when we come back. Greg Gumbel, Todd Blackledge, Armin Katayan back at the RCA Dome in Indianapolis where Peyton Manning begins with his worst field position of the day, his own 12-yard line, first and 10. And the Raider defense trying to make something happen here. They've come back to within 10, 24 to 14. And a lot tighter coverage here by Eric Allen and Charles Woodson right up on top of the wideout. Manning calls timeout. The call it before the penalty marker flew. He's running out of time at the line of scrimmage. So far, things starting out just the way. Indianapolis, number one. Well, John Gruden disagrees with that vehemently. <laughs> Take a look at Eric Allen now. Press coverage. 
on Jerome Payton. And then on the other side, Charles Woodson right up into the face of Marvin Harrison. Again, they started the game giving a lot more cushion. Peyton Manning able to kind of pick them apart. I really think they've defensively, they've got to take a few more chances, try to be a little more aggressive, do something to disrupt the timing of Peyton Manning in this offense. Now, he's too good, too skilled of a quarterback. If you let him get in a rhythm, get in that kind of timing, you can't do anything against him. So Manning burns a timeout early here in the third quarter. What it was is they just weren't used to coming out of a huddle. <laughs> goes down and that's Daryl Russell. Greg, I really thought the front four was going to have to start playing better in this second half. They ran a little stunt with the end, Tony Bryant, and then Russell able to just overpower Adam Meadows and get to the quarterback. Daryl Russell was responsible for a safety last week in the victory over San Diego. First sack of the day for the Oakland Raiders. Second and eight. Desiree James, nowhere, nowhere. Tony Bryant along with Darrell Russell there to meet him at the line of scrimmage, loss of a yard. And they called that play again. Now the, the Raiders feeling a little better about the audible system. They started yelling, watch the trap, watch the trap. And Darrell Russell stepped right into it and stopped the trap. Watch Russell come across the line of scrimmage and just negate the trap block. And that freed up Tony Bryant coming after him to make the play. Two great plays in a row by the front four of the Raiders. Third and long. And Manning from the shotgun standing in his own end zone. Movement on the line. Movement on the line, and there has been. Out of the snap, all start, 78 offense. That's After Tarek Glenn, and there's been a definite down. momentum swing here. Let's go down to Armin. You can definitely feel it down here. Right after that Rich Gannon touchdown, Greg, the, the whole sideline kind of lit up uh, as if under a fire, particularly the offensive line. Barrett Robbins talking to some of his teammates, basically saying, we can take these guys. Back to you. Thanks, Armin. Third false start of the day by the Indianapolis offensive line. Third and 20. Manning throws Dilger to the 10. Lost the football. Beaker has it inside the 15 yard line. The big defensive play that you said the Raiders needed yep. to come up with. This is a great play by Johnny Harris. He's going to be the guy that's going to get the football out. They let them throw underneath. That's OK. There's William Thomas. And then Johnny Harris comes and puts his helmet right on the football. And Beaker comes out with it. The first guy to the receiver, hold him up. Second guy, go for the football. It worked to perfection that time for the Raiders. Raiders take over just inside the 15-yard line. And a golden opportunity for Rich Gannon and company. Kaufman and Zach Crockett are in the backfield. Kaufman. Turning the corner, the 10, out of bounds at about the eight yard line, maybe the seven. Tyrone Poole ran him out. Armin mentioned the offensive line feeling good about themselves. The defensive line established themselves on that possession. The offensive line again, their second offensive possession of the second half, a great play on first down. Napoleon Kaufman, they like his ability, his quickness to turn a corner. Now Wheatley and Crockett compose the backfield. Wheatley to the six. It's a nice combination they have with Wheatley and Napoleon Kaufman. Wheatley much more physical. Napoleon Kaufman the quicker of the two, and particularly on this kind of a surface, on AstroTurf, he is extra quick, able to get to the corner. Nice change of pace between those two guys running from the tailback position. 
And now it's Wheatley and Richie as you look at the difference in rushing yards. The Raiders have the advantage. Wheatley straight ahead, no game. Short yardage plays all about leverage, getting underneath. Good job. They stuffed the fullback, John Ritchie. And then in there to make the play. Number 64, Larry Chester. Here's Janikowski to attempt the field goal. You know, you get the feeling, Todd, that after the big turnover, the Raiders went a little bit conservative. They did. They had the good run on first down and then nothing on the next two plays. 24-yard field goal attempt by Janikowski is good. So after the fumble recovery, the Raiders turn it into three points. It's a one-touchdown game. Pete Sampras, Marat Sapin. Mustafa Muhammad on the return. 15. Tripped up and falls to the 19-yard line. 19-yard return, Zach Crockett with the tackle, and Peyton Manning goes back to work. Momentum in this football game, as you look at Jim Mora in the first half, the Oakland defense, no sacks, no takeaways. Here on the last drive, they sacked Peyton Manning and recovered a fumble. On first down, Edwin James hit hard at the 30, forward to the 32-yard line, or rather the 22-yard line. Greg Beaker and Edwin James clearly had the advantage in the first quarter, but has been slowed since then. And the Colts going back to their no huddle offense again, which was so effective in that first half. Peyton Manning calling things at the line of scrimmage. Pulls it down and runs. Slides across the 30 to the 32, and that'll be a first down for Indianapolis. Greg Eric Allen made the tackle and came up limping a little bit, took himself out of the game. Something to keep an eye on, how long he'll be down, but a new cornerback in the game now for the Raiders. Torrey James in at the top of the screen. Four years at Denver Bronco. You hear the defense yelling, trap. James gets outside across the 35. Have you know, we seen a huge adjustment now by the Raider defense? Well, I think they're feeling a little bit better about themselves. They're, they're starting to get more aggressive. In the first half, they were guessing on some of the plays and guessing right, but didn't execute, didn't make the plays. So far here in the second half, they're getting to the football a lot better. They're winning more battles up front against the Colts offensive line. Pick up a four, second and six. Good pass, picked off out there by Torrey James. James to the 20. Brought down by Manning at the 15-yard line. Another Indianapolis turnover, and again, the Raiders are in great field position. Torrey James in for Eric Allen. Peyton Manning goes right after him, but a clear miscommunication between Manning and the receiver, Payton. Payton had turned up field. Take a look at the top of the screen. Payton runs by the corner. Manning thinking he's going to run the quick hitch. Throws the ball to a spot. Unfortunately for Peyton, Torrey James, the only guy in that spot. The eighth career interception for Torrey James, and look at the Raiders back knocking on the door and looking for a tie ball game. Tyrone Wheatley, the lone back. Get him to throw over the middle. James Jett to the 10, to the 8, and maybe the 7 yard line. You know, one thing I've noticed about Rich Gannon is he throws the ball differently from time to time. He doesn't have the same motion every throw he makes. Depending on where the pressure's coming from, sometimes he throws at three quarters, 
sometimes sidearm, whatever it takes to get the ball in the right spot, he adjusts his release. That time, a little three-quarter action to get the ball quickly to James Jeff. I believe sometime he comes Laredo. <laughs> Wheatley and Richie in the backfield. Second and two. This will be Wheatley looking for the first down, and he'll be close. Last time they were down here after the turnover, they had a good play on first down, and then we're stuffed on second and third down. We've got another critical third down and one situation for the Raider offense. Raiders coming back in the full yards department. Third and one. Gannon all by himself. Touchdown, Oakland. The third rushing touchdown for the Raider quarterback today. Great call by Bill Callahan and John Gruden. Everybody expecting Tyrone Wheatley to get the ball behind John Ritchie, the fullback. Watch the play fake by Gannon. Everybody buys into it. And an easy touchdown. The easiest of his three touchdowns today. No question about it. Janikowski for the tie. Twenty-four, twenty-four. John Gruden. Is he a happy man? I'd say so. The last seven minutes of an outstanding for Rich Gannon and the Oakland Raiders. Janikowski's kick. Muhammad a yard deep in the end zone. 15, 20. Knocked down at about the 24 or the 25 yard line. What was it defensive coordinator Vic Fangio of the Colts said? Well, he said with Rich Gannon, you've got to defend two plays. The one called in the huddle and the other play that he can create with his feet and his running ability. And the beauty of this call was the last third and one they had when they had to settle for the field goal. They gave it to Wheatley and the play was stuffed. They come right back the same looking action. And this time Gannon keeps it on the bootleg. Great job of play calling by John Gruden and Bill Callahan. John Gruden celebrating. However, a moment on the field now as Randy Jordan is down at about the 23-yard line. Jordan, a seventh-year running back out of North Carolina. And this is taking some time. Here's Rich Gannon. Well, he's showing something here. I mean, obviously Peyton Manning has had a great ball game, but Rich Gannon is really showing some maturity and some leadership. Everybody talked about what Peyton did in Arrowhead last week, and, you know, to win a game on the road in a tough place is very impressive. Rich Gannon doing a great job on the road here, getting the Raiders back in this ball game. The crowd gives Randy Jordan a hand as he's helped off the field, and uh, let's check in with Armin. You know, Greg, you talk about Rich Gannon. He's had to overcome some serious problems in his house the last couple of years. His daughter, Danielle, a couple of years ago, you know, had, was suffering from severe ear infections and, and diarrhea and vomiting and ulcers that put her in the hospital. They didn't know what was wrong with her. It turns out that she had a celiac disorder, which is basically eating too much gluten in your diet or having gluten in your diet. They found it out. It was damaging her intestines, poisoning her. The doctors found out. They fixed her, and she's doing fine. And she's wearing her cheerleading uniform at home right now. Back to you. All right, Armin. She and her sister, Alexis. The pitch, Edwin James. 25, 27-yard line. Smacked down by Johnny Harris, who has played a whale of a game for the Oakland Raiders. Harris, a second-year defensive back out of Mississippi State. Pickup of two on the play, and it'll be second and eight. You know, Todd, the first half, you sit here and you think you got a pretty good handle on this game, and all of a sudden, you don't know how it's gonna go. Tied at 24, coming up on three minutes to play here in the third quarter. Manning, quick drop, has time, over the middle, tipped incomplete. Take a look again now how the Raiders set up this last touchdown by Rich Gannon. Third and one the first time they run to Wheatley, stuff, nothing there. The next time fake the same play and Rich Gannon takes it in for the touchdown. The first time they had to settle for a field goal, that team they got the touchdown. Both plays looked the same from the beginning. That's Austin Robbins 
another Raider who is down on turf. And ironically, Randy Jordan was helped off the field a little while ago, a seventh year back out of North Carolina. Austin Robbins, a seventh year defensive tackle out of North Carolina. So a couple of Tar Heels have been helped off the turf here the last couple of minutes. Here he is up here working against Terry Glenn. Austin Robbins, see at the end of the play, Terry going for the cut block, which is a legal block, and just rolls up on the leg of Austin Robbins. And Robbins gets the cheer. He and Randy Jordan, teammates at North Carolina. Meanwhile, it's been a strange, strange half for Peyton Manning. Three passes, one completion, which Ken Dilger fumbled over to the Raiders. One interception and one batted down. I think the biggest difference here so far in the third quarter is that the front four of the Raiders is outplaying the offensive line of the Colts. In the first half, the offensive line of the Colts clearly had the upper hand. That has changed here in the third quarter. Big third down here from Manning and the Colts as well as the Raider defense. In on Manning and down he goes. Lance Johnstone beat his man at the line of scrimmage. Second sack of Manning on the day. They've been doing some things with Lance Johnstone in this third quarter too. They've been standing him up and moving him around in different spots and that time he just used his quickness to get inside. Here he is up top. He comes inside of Tariq Glenn, too quick for Glenn, and he gets the sack, the second sack now of Peyton Manning. Hunter Smith to kick for the first time today. David Dunn from the 21. Trying to turn the corner and does. 40, 45, knocked down at the 47-yard line. So the Raiders have some great field position. 54-yard punt and a 26-yard return. So here come the Oakland Raiders. First down at their own 46-yard line. Gannon, quick drop, quick pass, Ricky Dudley into Indianapolis territory, the 46-yard line. Ellis Johnson made the tackle. A gain of eight, and it'll be second and two. Take a look at Gannon again. Now he's looking in the middle of the field, about three quarters to big Ricky Dudley, a big target in there at six foot six. Again, he really adjusts that release to whatever is the most efficient way to get it to the receiver. Hoffman. Met at the line of scrimmage. He may have picked up two, and he is pretty close to a first down. Mike Peterson with the stop for the Colts. And we're going to get a measurement here. Pretty good job by Kaufman that time because that play was bottled up, and he knew they only needed short yardage for the first down. And gave up any hopes of making a big play to try to get it forward for the first down. Sometimes two yard runs can be great runs. <laughs> Boy, momentum is a funny thing, isn't it? Sure is. The Raiders were missing it completely in the first half. They have that much for a first down. John Gruden shouting, <laughs> shouting into that microphone, which Rich Gannon can clearly hear in his headset. This play might be what you might call a tide turner. Should be a snake. Wheatley, first down to the 40. Following on the right side, Mo Collins, Lincoln Kennedy blocking on the right side of that offensive line. Mentioned at the very beginning of the show how big that offensive line is. 
Stinchcomb 310, Wisniewski 305, Barrett Robbins 315, Collins at 325, and Lincoln Kennedy at 330. Napoleon Kaufman at the bottom of the screen as a wide receiver. Gannon throws down the field, complete. Penalty marker is down. One out of bounds at the five yard line is Andre Riser. 35 yard pickup, and let's check the penalty. It's going to be against the Colts. Here's Bob McElwee. Illegal hands to the face. Number 20 defense. Penalty is declined. First down. Jeff Burris, the guilty party. He was the one beat by Andre Risen. This is not a very pretty throw by Rich Gannon. A duck, but he does a good thing. When you got a guy wide open, throw the ball right to him. Don't try to throw it out in front of him. Get it right to him. Doesn't matter how it looks, as long as it got to number 80. You know, it's a real good thing it doesn't matter how it looks. <laughs> First and goal for the Raiders. Red zone offense today has been terrific. Wheatley up the middle. Touchdown! For the first time today, the Oakland Raiders are in the lead. Running behind that right side again, Mo Collins and Lincoln Kennedy. Ricky Dudley getting through onto the linebacker. Nice block by the tight end and an easy touchdown for Tyrone Wheatley. Lincoln Kennedy created a hole that a truck could have gone through. Janikowski for the extra point. It's good. A tale of two games, 41 seconds to play here in the third quarter and the Oakland Raiders have grabbed a 31-24 lead. Someone other than Rich Gannon has scored a touchdown. Tyrone Wheatley into the end zone. And the Raiders with 24 unanswered points now in the last 10 minutes, 15 seconds. And it starts up front, Greg. I mean, the, the offense and defensive lines for the Raiders have started to take control of the football game and thus the change in momentum, the change in lead on the scoreboard. Up front, the Raiders are taking control of the game. Boy, what do you think the difference is in that man's mindset from about an hour ago? Coach <laughs> has to towel off on the sideline, too. I'm impressed with the discipline of the Raiders here. You know, coming into a hostile environment, getting down quickly. It says a lot about John Gruden and about his coaching staff that they could go into the locker room, still feel confident in what they were doing, realize they just needed to step up their physicality in the second half, and things would work out a little bit better. Janikowski set to kick it to number 28, Peyton Williams, and number 21, Mustafa Muhammad. This is... Williams. 20 down at the 23 yard line after a 24 yard return. You know, these Oakland Raiders can find all kinds of reasons to get up for football games, perhaps none more powerful than the emotion provided from the loss of safety Eric Turner, who died of stomach cancer very suddenly. John Gruden was telling us at one moment. He was a very, very active part of this team, and the next, he was gone, and they dedicate a locker at home and on the road to number 29, Eric Turner. First down for the Colts from their own 23. Manning has to find a way to get it back. Quick pass over the middle, falls short of Payfon coming over the middle. And Manning was feeling the pressure again. Grady Jackson that time, number 90 from his defensive tackle position, and they're creating some pressure, hurrying the throw of Peyton Manning. Again, they've, they've done a great job here in the third quarter of disrupting Peyton's rhythm. He was totally in sync, totally in rhythm the first half, has not been the case here in the third quarter. I remember at the start of the second half when John Gruden talked to Armin Gatte and he said, number one, we have to execute. Manning just one out of four throwing the football this half, Edwin James. 
running room across the 25, out to the 28 yard line. Woodson and Johnny Harris with the stop. And it appears that'll be the end or the last play of the third quarter. Time winding down, the teams will take a walk to the other end of the field. And that is the end of the third quarter with the score. The Raiders 31 and the Colts 24. We'll come back to the RCA Dome after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Well, at halftime, we were saying it was all Indianapolis in the first half, and it was. Look at what the Oakland Raiders did in the third quarter. Complete and total domination. Third and five for Manning. Over the middle, complete, short of first down yardage, though, is Marvin Harrison. He picked up four, and Hunter Smith will come on to kick it away. Nice job by William Thomas in the open field. Four-man rush, they played zone behind it, and William Thomas with the sure tackle, not allowing any forward progress by Marvin Harrison. David Dunn back to receive the kick. Oh, Hunter Smith gets off a boomer. Dunn from the 12. Across the 20 to the 23-yard line. 56-yard punt and an 11-yard return. And the Raiders are back on offense. Greg Gumbel, Todd Blackledge back in Indianapolis. The Raiders have scored on five straight drives. I have to ask you if this has surprised you, this turnaround. Well, it has surprised me a little bit, although I thought coming in they were the more physical team. They didn't show it early. They're starting to assert themselves now. Napoleon Kaufman, left side, trying to find running room. Across the 25 to about the 27-yard line. Chad Bratsky stringing it out from his defensive end position made the stop after a gain of four. You know, a couple times in the first half we said, this is a must series for the Raider offense. I think we can say the same thing about the Colt defense right now. They've got to do something. They've got to come up with a play to stop this momentum that the Raiders have seized here in the second half. Ball is at the 27 yard line. Double tight ends for the Raiders, Dudley and Brigham. Tim Brown in motion, quick pass, Gannon to Wheatley, first down and more, out of bounds across the 40 to about the 42-yard line. Jason Belzer banged him out of bounds, but not before Wheatley picked up 15 yards in the first down. And credit the attention that Andre Risen draws when he's on the field. Everybody went in with him on the slant, and that left Wheatley all alone out on the sideline for the easy catch. A little combination, the wide receiver running the slant, the back coming out on the arrow route, and Wheatley all alone. Good read by Rich Gannon. And now the Oakland Raiders truly mixing it up on offense. First and ten. Gannon, six straight completions. Wheatley. For a couple of yards and no more. You know, those around the country who may be wondering, you know, what are the Raiders doing leading Indianapolis? They weren't that far away a year ago. A ton of close games, eight losses by a total of 34 points. Yeah, I guess you could look at the other side of that too and say, well, five of their eight wins were close too, so they could have gone either way. But the bottom line is they played in a lot of close football games a year ago, finishing eight games. Second and seven from the 45 yard line. Gannon, pump fakes, throws, near side, Brigham out of bounds, but he has enough for the first down. Now we talk about how competitive the Raiders are. Last year, they had the toughest schedule in the National Football League. Look at what they're dealing with this year. It's going to be a breath of fresh air by comparison. Yeah, back-to-back, -back, eight and eight seasons for John Gruden, at least from a schedule standpoint. It sets up for them to make a strong run towards the playoffs this year if they can stay healthy and if they play the way they're playing here today. 11 first downs for the Raiders this half. Wheatley. 
to the 43. Chad Cota hanging on and bringing him down. It'll be second and six. Jim Mora wondering just what happened to that football team he had going so well in the first half. Chris Fangio, defensive coordinator. A lot of two tight ends by the Raiders. One wide receiver, a lot of power set, feeling like they are much more physical right now than the Colts on defense. Play fake. Gannon with all kinds of time. Throws over the middle, hits Ricky Dudley across the 30 to the 29, and that'll be another Oakland first down. 14 yards. Can't give quarterbacks in the National Football League this much time. Rich Gannon able to step up in the pocket, still seeing clearly down the field. It was about four seconds he had to throw that football to Ricky Dudley, an easy completion for the first down. Gannon yet to be sacked today, and we heard that strange sound for the first yeah. time today. Booze coming down from the crowd. Napoleon Kaufman with blockers in front of him. 25 to about the 23-yard line. Greg, right now the Raiders are just challenging the Colts physically. They're playing two tight ends, two backs, one wide receiver, and just running power football behind the fullback. They went away from the tight end, and again, Napoleon Kaufman able to get to the corner thanks to the block of fullback John Ritchie. You saw number 74, Matt Stinchcomb, out there. He was a first-round draft pick in 99, missed all of last season with injury. Played last week at Kansas City. This is only his second NFL game. Wheatley and Ritchie in the backfield. Wheatley. To about the 21 yard line. A pickup of two, and it'll be third and two. Again, two tight ends. Tailback behind the block of the fullback John Ritchie coming right at the ump camp. I love that shot there with the, with the inside running plays. That gives you a feel at home of just how the intensity and the collisions that take place in there between the tackles. Raiders with 67 yards on the ground last week. And more than doubled it today. Third and two. Wheatley. First down yardage and more forward to the 17. The Raiders have done a masterful job of rotating Napoleon Kaufman and Tyrone Wheatley. The last touchdown when Rich Gannon ran the bootleg off that same action. Give it to the tailback deep, short yardage, follow the block of the fullback. Done a nice job mixing what they do out of that short yardage formation. Be a little tougher for Rich Gannon to pull off that same fake <laughs> again, but we shall see. The 10th play of this drive. First down. Kaufman is in the backfield. Kaufman gets the football. Bounces off the tackler. Couldn't elude the second. Chad Bratsky, number 92, pulled him down. It'll be about a two-yard loss. We'll call it second and 12. Colts defense needing a big play. Chad Bradsky is going to come from the backside. Ellis Johnson actually there to slow up the pursuit. And then Brasky able to chase him down. Watch Ellis Johnson. Ellis Johnson a little shaken up at the end of that play, but he was able to at least redirect Napoleon Kaufman. Johnson played off the Wisniewski block. Four touchdowns and a field goal for Oakland. Their five previous trips into the red zone. Cannon keeps it. 15, out of bounds, just inside at the 14-yard line. What was it I was saying about not being able to do that again? <laughs> Fool me once, shame on me, yeah. shame, however that goes, but they tried it again. They aren't going to score a touchdown, but they're at least going to bring up a manageable third down situation. Rich Gannon gets some positive yardage before being knocked out of bounds by Nate Poole. Again, when you, when you run that play and you have success running the tailback, you've got to respect that. Very easy to forget about the quarterback, especially if you have a quarterback like Peyton Manning who doesn't run very much. Third and seven, and Gannon calls timeout. 
Down to three seconds on the play clock. He calls timeout, 7-0-1 to play here in the fourth. Oakland with the ball and a one touchdown lead. Greg Gumbel, Todd Blackledge, Armin Katayan at the RCA Dome, and the fans can sense how big a play this is. Third and seven, what do you look for, Todd? I think they're gonna go play action. They've got two tight ends and two backs in their power formation. Maybe try to put Rich Gannon out on the corner, give him a run pass option. Remember, he's got three rushing touchdowns today already. Gannon straight drop to throw. Has time, throws over the middle. John Ritchie inside the five. It'll be first and goal for the Raiders. What a nice play by Rich Gannon, Greg. He's made great decisions on when to run today. This time he makes a great decision not to run. He starts to scramble as the coverage is downfield, and then at the last minute, he just flips it to his fullback, who's got a full head of steam running up the field. May not have made the first down had he run it. That time, a great decision to hold up, throw the football. In addition to blocking, Richie specialty catching the ball out of the backfield. It's his first catch of the day. First and goal from the two. Wheatley, not going to get there. Larry Chester, number 64, in on the tackle for the Colts. John Gruden trying to figure out what's going to work next. Boy, they have just really taken it to this front seven of the Colts here in the second half. Two tight ends, a big, powerful fullback, Tyrone Wheatley and Napoleon Kaufman, and just challenging the Colts running the football. You see the length of this drive, now over eight and a half minutes for the Raiders. Good setup for a play action pass here. Wheatley, dive, touchdown! What an impressive, impressive comeback by the Oakland Raiders. Power football, leverage on the goal line. John Ritchie clearing the way, and Tyrone Wheatley, nobody able to get to his legs as he goes over the top. John Gruden's <laughs> way of saying hallelujah. Janikowski for the extra point. 5.39 to play here in the fourth quarter. Jim Mora has got to find a way to rally his troops. They're down 38-24. Five rushing touchdowns for the Raiders today. Janikowski kicks to Peyton Williams, who will not run it from two yards deep in the end zone. The Indianapolis Colts led 21-0, three minutes to play in the first half. Look at the lead blocked by John Ritchie to clear the way for Tyrone Wheatley. Greg Gumbel, Todd Blackledge, and Armin Katayan back at the RCA Dome in Indianapolis. 5.33 to play in the fourth. The Raiders have come from 21-0 down to lead 38 to 24. Peyton Manning just two of five here in the second half after a terrific first half. Starts from his own 20. Each team two timeouts remaining. Raiders are moving Lance Johnstone around, playing him almost like a stand-up linebacker. James out of the backfield. Can't get past Johnstone, who drags him down. May have gained two yards on the play. It'll be second and eight, and they'll go without a huddle. Take it! Manning throws, got Gilder. Gilder across the 35 to the 38-yard line. That's a first down for the Colts. Johnny Harris there for the tackle. Right now, what Chuck Bresnahan is saying on his defense is saying, hey, let's still stay aggressive. We've taken over the, the physical part of the game, but let's not give up the big easy one. Make them throw underneath, make them earn everything they get. Manning, quick flip, incomplete, and Johnny Harris again, this time all over Marvin Harrison. Johnny Harris came on early in this half in place of Marquez Pope and has played an outstanding football game. 
Peyton just trying to dump it to his reliable Marvin Harrison and Johnny Harris right there. And right here you see a little bit of the difference between Peyton Manning and Rich Gannon. Rich Gannon in that situation maybe would decide to tuck it and run, try to get five or six yards. Peyton Manning more comfortable trying to get the ball to Marvin Harrison. Second and ten. Manning pulls this one down and runs. Midfield slides, first down. So much for that theory. <laughs> Good decision that time to get up the middle of the field. 11-yard pickup by Manning. Clock continues to move. 4.20 to play in regulation. Manning, quick one over the middle. Harrison can't hold on and completes. See, the good thing for John Gruden and Chuck Bresnahan right now is that other than being a pass receiver, Edger and James is he's a non-factor in the Colts offense right now because they've got to go hurry up. They've got to go out of the shotgun. They're not going to use their same arsenal of running and mixing the run and pass because they're down two touchdowns. Still obviously have to be aware of him coming out of the backfield as a receiver, but a different type of threat. On second and ten. Pump fake, throw, complete. Marvin Harrison will go for the touchdown. What a bullet thrown by Peyton Manning. And exactly what Chuck Bresnahan did not want to happen. Don't give up the easy touchdown. That time, Dorsett just makes a bad angle. This throw is going to be right between the corner and the safety. The safety coming over the top. Dorsett makes a bad angle to the receiver and an easy touchdown for Marvin Harrison. Charles Woodson had underneath coverage, turned him over to the safety. The safety took a bad angle to the football. Vanderjack for the extra point. The Colts are within a touchdown. It took the Colts a minute 32 to go 80 yards for the touchdown. 38, 31, Raiders 407 to play. But this was a cover two, which means there's a safety right here who's defending this half of the field. Charles Woodson is defending this part. The ball is going to be thrown right here in the middle. That's the soft spot in a cover two. But the safety has to take a better angle to the football. He took a slim angle, and Marvin Harrison able to make the catch and ease it into the end zone. That play belongs to the safety. Anthony Dorsett, he's got to make a better play on that football. They might get the completion, but they should have never gotten a touchdown. Still a nice job by Peyton Manning sticking the football in there in the right place. So Danny Kite to kick. Napoleon Kaufman at the five yard line for the Raiders. Still at 4.07 to play. It's a one touchdown game. Football bouncing down and into the end zone. It'll be a touchback. And the Raiders will start from their own 20 yard line. I want to remind you next Sunday, the NFL on CBS features divisional matchups, including Rob Johnson and the Bills taking on Vinny and the Jets. Brian Greasy sparks the Broncos against Tim Brown and these Oakland Raiders. Check your local listings, beginning with Jim, Randy Craig, Jerry, Mike, and Marcus on the NFL today. This has been fun, hasn't it? It has been fun. And the crowd getting back into it, and the onus clearly on the Colts defense right now. The offense has gotten them back in the ball game. They're down by a touchdown. The Colts defense now must step up and get a good series here against the Raiders. Oakland has scored on six consecutive drives. Wheatley. Hardly any gain at all. Maybe a yard. We'll call it second and nine. Now is when you value the big back and the ability to pound the football and use up the clock. And a big offensive line, which they have. And, and again, they're a bigger, more physical front than the Colts are up front defensively. That time, a good play, though, on first down to bring up second and ten, second and long yardage. 
That works in the favor of the Colts right now. Each team with two timeouts remaining. We are at 3.20 to play in regulation. Gannon to throw. Over the middle. Tim Brown incomplete at the 25-yard line. The pass was low, but how often do you see Tim Brown not be able to hold on? Pretty reliable. Good pass rush that time by the Colts. Forced Gannon to move up in the pocket and throw that thing off balance. And now third down and 10 for the Raiders. Play clock down to seven, six, and five. Gannon under center, calling signal to one. The handoff to Wheatley up the middle, and Wheatley to the 25-yard line, not enough for the first down, and they'll have to kick it away. And now the Colts call timeout to stop the clock at just under three minutes to play. Colts use their second timeout. They have one remaining. Now let's talk a little bit about this rookie, Shane Leckler. The Raiders love his hang time. Yeah. They say he can boom them. We were watching him in practice, and we were amazed, Todd, at how high he's getting the ball. He's a very mature kid. I talked to Bob Casulo, the new special teams coach, who was at Michigan State last year, his first year with the Raiders, and talking about the difference between Janikowski and Leckler. He says Leckler is, you know, just a, a much more level-headed guy at this point in his career, very coachable guy. And, They've been very pleased with him. Last week he had 10 punts against San Diego, put five of those 10 inside the 20-yard line. So he did a great job in the opener, and he needs to get a hold of one here. Leckler, two kicks today, 59 and 55 yards in college at Texas A&M. Set an NCAA record with a career average of 44.7. And kicking in a dome, I and mean, this, is, this is a kicker and punter's dream, kicking in here. Perfect weather conditions. Great opportunity to boom it. The rookie, Peyton Williams, at the 25-yard line. He didn't get off a good one. It wobbles. Williams from the 30. Looking for running room. Tries to turn it up. Brought down at the 35-yard line. Zach Crockett with the tackle. And Peyton Manning trots onto the field with 2.49 to play and one timeout. One timeout, but in essence he has two because the clock will stop with the two-minute warning, so he'll be able to use that as a timeout. Of his seven career comebacks in the fourth quarter, six of them happened last season. And that's one of the things everybody, when you talk about John Elway and Dan Marino, that's one of the first things they bring up, the fourth quarter comeback. Peyton Manning trying to etch his name as one of the great ones, too. Steps up, throws over the middle. Harrison to the 46-yard line of the Oakland Raiders and a first down, an 18-yard pickup. Clock continues to move. We're at two and a half minutes. Nice protection up front, Greg. That was, again, a long-developing play. The wide receiver coming all the way across the field. Manning, tip in the air, incomplete. Number 21, Eric Allen. Eyes had to be huge as he watched the ball float toward him. Take a look at this play, trying to get it on the quick slant. John Stone gets his hand on the football. Eric Allen going for the interception. Reagan Upshaw coming from the other side, thought he might get an interception. They're telling where Jim Moore's heart was at that moment. <laughs> Second and ten. Usually when that ball gets popped up in the air, something bad happens. Manning throws over the middle. That's complete to Payton. Payton to the 32-yard line. That'll be a first down. 13-yard pickup, and Manning appears that he'll be content to take the two-minute warning. Two minutes to play in Indianapolis. The Colts need a touchdown to tie. 
Colts trying to get right back and tie the game. Two big throws by Peyton Manning. First to Marvin Harrison on a crossing route, and then the last play to Jerome Payton, another crossing route. Perfect throw right around the coverage of Eric Allen. Two great throws on crossing routes by Peyton Manning. Two minutes to play. On first down, Manning fires. Complete inside the 20 yard line to E.G. Green, number 84. 13 yards and a first down. Clock continues to move, a minute 40. One timeout available to Manning, and a whistle blows. We are reviewing the ruling on the field. Under two minutes. Replay kicks in automatically. And so they're going to take a look at that catch by E.G. Green. Peyton Manning trying to get that next play off in a hurry. Take a look at it. Does the ball hit the ground? Looks like a catch to me, Todd. Yeah, Tom. it does. We had one earlier that went in favor of the Colts, and it was a good call, and that one there looks like E.G. Green had his hands, both hands, under the football again. It was Payton earlier in the ball game. That appears to be a catch. Well, you might say that the pace of this game was breakneck speed up until now. <laughs> and you know who this benefits more than anybody right now is the front four of the Raiders because they were tired on this drive. They were not getting the same kind of pressure on Peyton Manning. So even if this ruling goes against them, this is a good stoppage of play for the Raiders because it gives those big fellas a chance to get some water and get some rest so they can crank up that pass rush again. That's another thing that no huddle does, keeps you yeah. from rotating those guys up front. It sure does. As Todd mentioned, the second review today. So the crowd greatly anticipating that this will be upheld. We welcome those of you who have been watching Miami and Minnesota. The Vikings with a 13-7 win over the Dolphins. And Bob McElwee, our referee, is reviewing this play. Todd? It was a throw to E.G. Green. And from that angle, it appears that he had his hands underneath the football. The ball did not appear to bobble when he hit the ground. After reviewing the play, it is a catch. First down on the 19 yard line. Please reset the stadium clock to 156. So this gets backed up to a minute 56 now. Here's our situation. Indianapolis led with three minutes to play in the first half by a score of 21 nothing appeared to have this game well in hand the Raiders have come roaring back here in the second half they led 38 24 until a few moments ago Marvin Harrison caught a touchdown pass to cut the lead to 38 31 and now Peyton Manning and the Colts with a first down at the 19 yard line and Bob McElwee coming back again perhaps to double check that time. He originally said reset the stadium clock to a minute 56. With the clock at a minute 37 now, that seems excessive. Yeah. To make the point again, Greg, again, this stoppage of play, the ruling has gone against the Raiders. The Colts have the ball in the red zone. But a good stoppage of play for the Raiders to the give their big men rest. 138. 138. 138 on the clock. Huge difference in time. Huge difference. So Peyton Manning and the Colts first down from the 19-yard line of the Raiders. They have one timeout remaining. they misunderstood how convenient of them here in India <laughs> it's 138 and now we have it set correctly four previous trips to the red zone Indianapolis had three touchdowns and a field goal <laughs> 
First down from the 19 yard line for Manning and penalty markers fly. Those of you who watched Cleveland defeat Cincinnati, welcome. Greg Gumbel, Todd Blackledge, Armin Kutayan here in the RCA Dome in Indianapolis. All start prior to the snap on the quarterback. Five yards, first down. We've talked about how well Peyton Manning uses the snap count. That time he fooled himself. I mean, he pulled out before the ball was to be snapped. The center held the football and the five-yard penalty on Peyton Manning, but he has done a marvelous job with his snap count throughout the football game. That is the fourth false start call against the Colts today. A minute 33 on the clock. Manning with time, running out of time, loose ball. Penalty marker is down. Manning came up with the football, but now let's check the flag. It's holding against Indianapolis. Grady Jackson and Daryl Russell applying the pressure. Credit to coverage downfield by the Raiders secondary. Peyton Manning nowhere to go with the football, had time. And good penetration, good push from Daryl Russell. Holding number 73, offense. 10 yards, repeat first down. That's right tackle Adam Meadows. So it'll be first down from the 34. Chuck Bresnahan, defensive coordinator for the Oakland Raiders. A minute 28 to play. First and 25 for the Colts. Don't forget about Edger and James here now. He's been pretty quiet. Manning with time over the middle. Dilger dropped it. Dilger had it and dropped it. Clock stops with a minute 23 to play. John Gruden has seen a terrific turnaround by his Raiders, and now they're trying to put the stops on the Colt offense in the final minute and a half here. Play clock is at five. Manning should get this off, and he does. Steps up, throws, and overthrows everybody. Almost intercepted by Johnny Harris. And we welcome those of you who watched the Tennessee Titans come back to defeat Kansas City 17-14. Greg Gumbel along with Todd Black, legend Armin Kutayan here in the RCA Dome. The pass by Manning kind of hung up there. And Johnny Harris almost came down with it. Johnny Harris has had a nice ball game. Could have put a real cap on his performance today if he hangs on to that. But credit the pressure up front. It forced Manning to move in the pocket, and he wasn't able to really step into that throw. A huge third and 25 for the Colts. Manning going deep down the sideline toward the corner incomplete. Eric Allen was there covering E.G. Green. And the Colts are facing fourth and 25. And Daryl Russell in around the face of Peyton Manning, forcing the errant throw again. Again, we had the, the long stop of the clock for the review, and the defensive line of the Raiders able to, to get some rest and get their legs back in the last couple plays have been able to put more pressure on Peyton Manning and force a couple bad throws. And now Russell goes to the sideline as the Raiders will go with a three-man rush. Since that challenge, the Colts with three incomplete passes and two penalties. Fourth and 25. Here's the ball game. Manning still looking, still looking. Throws for the end zone. It is intercepted in the end zone by the Raiders. Picked off by number 20, Torrey James. His second interception of the day, and that should put the cap on a terrific comeback by the Oakland Raiders. The penalties really backed him up, Greg, to where they had to go for a big play. He was going to the end zone. He had Edger and James right out there. Might have been able to dump it underneath and let him run. He went for the end zone, and the Raiders there playing a prevent defense to stop the fourth down play. For those of you who joined us, 
and the Colts will use their final timeout. Here's how this game went today. Marcus Pollard, a 13-yard touchdown reception. Edger and James ran in from six yards out. And James, with a 10-yard reception, made it 21 to nothing. Gannon, a three-yard run, 21-7. Vanderjack, a field goal to make it 24-7. Then, in the third quarter, Gannon, from seven yards out, 24-14. Janikowski, a 24-yard field goal, made it a 24-17 game. And then Gannon from six yards out, tied it at 24. Wheatley on six yards. And then Wheatley again from one. Harrison, a 50-yard catch. We're at 38-31. And the clock continues to run. The Colts can't stop it. That's going to be one happy flight back yeah. to Oakland, isn't well, it? Well, you're not kidding. And John Gruden has to feel really good about his football team and what they showed. Jim Morris said he learned a lot about his team playing on the road in Kansas City, how they fought back. John Gruden's got to learn a lot about his team today, how they played on the road and fought back way down in this ball game and completely turned the game around in the second half. John Gruden wants him to get off this play before the play clock expires. Gannon will use every last second before he takes a knee. And that's the ball game. The Raiders look completely down and out. Completely down and out in the first half. And have come back to win this game. Jim Nance and company will be in New York with a recap of everything that's happened all day long around the National Football League. You take some time. As for here. The Oakland Raiders with a terrific comeback victory to go 2 and 0 for the season. 38 to 31. There are still 10 seconds showing on the clock. And you know what? I don't think they're going to clear the field for it. <laughs> well, Bob McElwee has come back. And now the time is going to run down to make it official. Boy, Peyton Manning and the Indianapolis Colts off to such a terrific start today. And the Colts just couldn't sustain. 38-31, the Raiders winners over the Indianapolis Colts. The Colts fall to 1-1. One one. The Raiders are 2-0. Jim Nansen Company on the other side of a timeout. For everyone here in Indianapolis, I'm Greg Gumbel. Thanks for joining us.